Now that most of the machine is together, next we'll fab up a stand so it has somewhere to sit. Although the machine is designed to work as a benchtop unit, we thought for us in our shop it would work better if it had its own stand. When welding is done, we'll send it off for powder coating to match the machine. We built the main structure with 2 inch box tube and welded some 8 inch steel plate to the corners to frame in door and access panel locations. The frame intersections have recessed plates for some heavy duty 4 inch casters and the ends of the vertical segments of tube are capped and tapped for some half inch bolts as leveling feet. The rear has an articulating assembly for the caster mount so the heavy machine will roll well on the uneven sections of our floor. We have some aluminum cuts in 8 inch for the side panels. Two of them are mounted to piano hinges for easier access and the other two are bolted in place. Same as the rest of the machine, these steel and aluminum pieces on the stand were laser cut with all the required holes for hinges, bolts and even the power switch. Once the panels are in place, we'll use them as templates to drill and tap for the bolt holes into the tube steel. We'll bolt the hinges in place for now, but once everything's installed and it looks like it fits right, we'll replace these with rivets because I think they look a little bit better. The front panel currently has all the AC equipment on it. This is temporary and we'll reinstall this stuff into a proper box, but this should work for now to get the machine wired for testing. So a little bit on the electrical equipment here. We have our 1500 watt 80 volt DC power supply for the stepper motors. We have a 2.2 kilowatt 400 hertz VFD, two 15 amp breakers, some terminal blocks for power distribution, a 60 watt 24 volt DC power supply for the controller, and a couple of 15 amp relays. The AC power in is 110 volts. <laughs> the simple things, Chris. <laughs> I, look like a, I feel like a toddler. Brandon, <laughs> <laughs> right, get a front shot. I'll go over the, the I'll go over the bowl. <laughs> I don't know that that really demonstrated yeah. <laughs> much. The last two panels are the bottom plate, which required a small amount of adjusting to fit, and the back, which will get installed when the machine is on the stand. I'm quite happy with the look of this guy, and I'm glad that we decided to go ahead with it. It's time to unite the CNC with the base, so we've mounted some lifting hooks to the leftover holes used in fabrication, and with these and a two-ton hoist, we'll lift the roughly 500-pound machine onto the stand. First will be a drive fit to mark the four bolt locations under the machine on the stand so they can be drilled and tapped. Then we'll install the machine for the final time. I jumped the gun and made up all the covers with my last order of aluminum, but none of them fit quite right so they're all going to need to be remade. The thickness of the powder coating and some other poor assumptions mean that some detailed post-construction measurements will be required to get this right. Sometimes 3D modeling beforehand just isn't enough. We got the whole machine together today. Stand assembled, all the electronics installed inside, uh, actual machine installed on the, the stand. All the wires hooked up. Oh, it looks real good. Looks real good. It's got roller feet, or roller, little casters underneath, and then leveling feet. You can see them there on the end. So I got them on the leveling feet right now. The casters, the front axle here actually articulates. So when we wheel it around a, an uneven floor, it's not trying to tripod or twist or anything like that. So that's why that's set up like that. We ran it a bit, it's running good. Uh, I made the unfortunate mistake of blowing up the VFD for the spindle, I don't know what the hell I did, but uh, the second I turned it on, it shot smoke out of everywhere. So unfortunately I can't run the spindle right now until I get a new VFD, but the rest of the machine is running really good. There's one little programming error I gotta figure out with the controller, uh, just in my homing sequence, but 
everything is working real good. Very happy, it seems very sturdy, very steady. Other than that little VFD issue, it was a pretty successful day, so next step is gonna be playing around with it a bit more, or a bit, and uh, seeing what it can do, but everything's checking out real good so far. So here's what it's like with the door open. So there's all our electronics packaged up there. Uh, a couple wires still need to be hooked up. My VFD that I cooked, uh, power supply. This is all kind of temporary, but whatever, it's hooked up for now. I'll wire it in through there. This side is also a door, just to access the water pump and coolant pumps, whatever else goes underneath here. But yeah, that's what it looks like underneath. Nice little storage area. Not bad. Doors work nicely. They're just on little piano hinges. And they just bolt closed. Should suffice. Here we go. So, turn that big boy on. Controller firing up. Gotta put in the password here. So I'm still figuring some of this out, but here are the basic screens that can be accessed from the tabs at the top of the screen. This is the jog screen with your free jog controls and homing, which will be the one displayed on startup. Here's the file screen where you can access the flash drive and load your code. And here's the setup page where all the parameters are set. General settings here will display the programmable inputs and outputs as well as their current state on the controller. Here's where you'll assign inputs like homing sensors, alarms, stops and switches, and outputs like pumps, oilers, and relays. Under homing, you can set the sequence, homing speed, and back off distances for the homing operation individually for each axis. The controller has a 0 to 10 volt output for the VFD control and that is configured here under the spindle tab. You can designate the signal type, max speed, ramp up and ramp down times of the spindle. Each axis has specific parameters which are required for the controller to accurately position and run the stepper or servo motors. Settings include the travel per revolution of the motors, and that will be determined by your screw pitch, pulse rate set by the drivers with micro-stepping, hours are 6400, acceleration, min and max travel, and backlash. Other cool options include setup for auto lubricators and various tool changers. Oops, didn't like that. Okay, there we go. Reset that. I'm gonna go load my file. I'm gonna load that guy. And go home. I'm gonna home the machine. Gotta hold it for three seconds. Okay, that's homed. I'll zero that out. All right, watch this. How do I do this? Program and cycle start. I don't know why it's doing that. What am I doing? Still learning this, folks. All right, try this. Put that back down. Why does it think? I'm confused. There you go. Start. Let's do this again. Why are you doing that? All right, file loaded, jog probing. Continuous mode. Okay, you're at zero. Uh, oh, that should work. Ooh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Start, 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 start. Hmm. Oh, I got it going.
man, I really like this controller. Look at that. I'm new to this controller and obviously I have a lot to learn, but my first impressions are that it is really well laid out, the screen is very responsive, and it has more features than I will likely ever need. My favorite thing is how nicely it packages with the machine, and there aren't wires and equipment running all over the place. We threw a random file on the CNC today for some first cuts and we'll run it nice and slow to keep an eye on all the moving components and make sure that nothing is walking around on us. This cut should keep the machine moving for a good 40 minutes, after which we'll look over everything for any surprises. On top is a state of the art dust collection system and we have a high tech coolant system hooked up underneath to keep the spindle cool. I have a whole bunch of test cuts and all sorts of materials waiting in queue, but we're going to start nice and easy.